It's another raw video from your favorite YouTube scout, Draft Raw Authentic. Yes, I am finally here, folks. And like I said, it's a raw video, so there will be no edit. Anyway, like I said in my previous video with my with an interview with my cousin, UVA linebacker Micah Kaiser, that the linebacker videos will be coming out this Saturday. Well, guess what? It's Saturday. And so I have a list of guys. I have my notes with me, so if I keep on looking down, I'm just looking at my notes. But anyway, I have my list of the linebackers of the 2018 NFL Draft. Now, this is going to be split into two different videos, one for the inside and one for the outside. Um, and I'm going to split it actually into two different categories for both videos. The outside linebackers, I'm going to go through the pass rushers and the guys that are should be picked in between, you know, in the first to like the third round and then in the second part the second category is going to be the regular outside linebackers for like a 4-3 but I'm not going to go into any of those guys that I think are going to be bad I'm going to just go into the guys that I think that have some ability to really play in this league in the inside linebacker part it's going to be obviously the guys that, that should be chosen in the first three or four rounds and then the second part of it is going to be guys that uh will be chosen later in the rounds or whatever um so anyway, both lists have about 13 to 14 names, but I'm going to shrink it down definitely to just 13 for both. One linebacker that I'm not going to go too deep into is my cousin, Micah Kaiser. I had the interview with him. I can just say this, um, Micah Kaiser, instinctive, good linebacker, can tackle, can tackle and do a lot of different things. The things that he needed to work on from last year was his cover skills, which he actually got better at this year, so that's a positive for him. The only other thing that that may hinder him will be his sideline to sideline speed. Um, and that's just straight up, you know, the, the hips, the quick agility, trying to get the sideline to sideline. Sometimes running backs can go all the way out to the sideline and get the edge on them, be able to run down the field. It happens. I mean, not every linebacker is going to be as fast as some of the, some of these, you know, hybrid safety linebackers that you're going to see. So if anything, Micah is going to be good in the league regardless. Whether he can play on third down or not, he's going to be solid in the league. I just know that he's a hard worker, and uh, he's going to prove that he can be better than what people are giving him credit for. But anyway, like I said, I'm not going to go too much deeper to him. I already had that interview. Please check out that interview. It's a good one. Um, you're going to learn a lot about Micah and who he is and what he's trying to become during football and even after football and what he thinks about the injuries that have been happening recently and stuff like that so please check out that vid anyway if you can tell by the title this will be about the inside linebackers of the 2018 draft and if you've been studying the draft then you know who is the consensus top inside linebacker and that's been georgia linebacker Six foot, 230 pound Roquan Smith. Roquan is a guy that I actually do like a lot. He's a leader. He plays aggressive. He's fast. He's a guy that pretty much kind of have a lot of the skill sets that you look for the, recent, the more recent linebackers now. He can drop back in coverage. He can do a lot of good and different things. The one thing that will stop him is his size um, and taking on blocks. But in how the NFL is now, it's one of those things that's not as important. But it's one of those things I have to look at because if you are a guy that I see your name in the top 10, I have to look closely. I think that he is still deserving of a top 10 pick. Even if he doesn't go top 10, he definitely should go top 15. He's deserving of that because of the natural leadership ability and the tackling and the speed. He's just pretty much kind of got all of those type of things that you really look for. Um... And I really can't say too much about him, so let's just go to the next name on this list. A guy that may be a little bit overrated, but there's some good qualities about him. But there's this one thing that really, you know, kind of hinders him, in my mind, to say, hey, he is the top consensus linebacker in this draft. And that's Tremaine Edmonds. Tremaine Edmonds is a guy that he's been put up there um, recently, definitely in the top 10. He's a six foot five, 250 middle linebacker, which you don't see a lot. I see a guy that shoots gaps. I see a guy that tackles well. I see a guy that when running backs go out of the backfield and they go to the flat or they, you know, a little quick hitch route or something like that, you know, he's he can cover them pretty well. But I've never seen him drop back in coverage a lot. And that's the thing that kind of concerns me. 
He can do everything else, but in college, I don't see a lot of dropbacks. And in today's NFL, where you need to know how to cover as a linebacker, you not dropping back in coverage is a huge concern, especially being a six foot five linebacker. You will want him to definitely cover these six foot five, six foot six tight ends because you're saying, well, with his size, he can do it. But then you question, is it just a scheme or is can he not actually do it? Did Virginia Tech put him in position where he's not good enough to where they knew he's not good good enough to actually drop back coverage and they just never did it? Or is it a thing that a scheme wise where they just didn't want him to drop back coverage because they felt as though their safeties or corners or whatever can do it for him? Who knows? But I just know that in that perspective, I'm a little concerned about it. And we'll see after three years down the road how good he's going to be. But that's my biggest concern where I think he can actually be a little bit overrated. But I'm not going to make a separate video like that. I'm going to just put it out there. He's the one linebacker on this list where I'm just like, I'm not sure because of what I'm looking at. For him being a top 10 guy, uh, but whatever. Let's just get to the next name. Boise State linebacker who is about 6'4", around 245 pounds, Leighton Vander-esque. Now, this is a guy that's like kind of a mix mixture between Smith and Edmonds. Um, he's a guy that has speed. He can cover well. He can tackle well. He can block, you know, shed blocks and stuff like that. The thing about uh, Vander-esque is that sometimes he may be a little too aggressive and can over-pursue sometimes. And that's going to really hinder him as a linebacker. But just by just pure what he is, he actually may be the best linebacker in this draft class. And I've seen him going as high as the Packers at number 14. So if the media thinks he's a top 15 pick, I actually I looked at him. I think, yeah, he is a top 15 type of pick for a linebacker and what he can do with the size, the speed, and the tackling ability and all that. Sometimes he does mix some tackles. So... You know, that's going to hurt him a little bit. And level competition may be another thing that will hurt him just a little bit. But when you what you're looking for in the NFL, this guy has it. And you may question maybe his instincts a little bit, but because of his, you know, his highly athleticism that he has. But the thing is about him is he can do a lot of other things that is going to overshadow Maybe the over pursuing and instincts. But I can tell you one guy that has great instincts that are in this draft, and that is Josie Jewell from Iowa. Josie is a six foot two, 240 pound linebacker who may not have the best speed of him, but this guy is smart and very instinctive. Probably the most instinctive linebacker in this draft. I saw the game between him and, uh, and Saquon Barkley, Penn State, and they had a battle. First, you'll see Jewel making a play on Saquon. Then you'll see Saquon making a play on Jewel. They just went back and forth. And it was a great battle to see. Um, one of the best things I've seen in college football in a long time. And Jewel is a guy that he doesn't have the great athleticism. But he's so smart. He It overshadows everything. And to me, he's one of those guys that shouldn't bust in this league because of his, 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 his mind. His mind is going to take him to further places in the NFL. This guy, I'm just saying, he's to me, he's got it. He just doesn't have the athleticism. But he's got everything else. Now, getting into another linebacker who I'm a little up and down on because in this type of group of linebackers, in terms of, you know, recent picks that have came out, none of them have been, like, great. They've all been okay. You have one that's actually pretty good, but the rest have been kind of up and down, and it's kind of a a team that's very highly up there, but sometimes you always question, you know, some of their players. And that's Alabama linebacker Rashawn Edmond. Ed Evans, I'm sorry. Rashad Evans. Six foot two, two hundred and thirty pounds, I believe, or six foot one, two hundred and thirty two pounds, or something around that range. Um with him is He's, he's got the athleticism. He can tackle. He can drop man cover. He can do a lot of different things, but sometimes it's hard to rate these guys because they have so many other players on that team that are pretty good. And a lot of times, them just being more bigger and more physical than a lot of players that are in college, they end up, with all of them, all the players being like that, they end up making plays where in the NFL, you're not going to have those type of players when you're playing. So I, I always question those type of players, but 
I can say this. With his mindset, who he is as a person, he can become one of the better linebackers in this league. Um, better than Vander Esch, better than Edmonds, better than Raekwon Smith. Heck, better than my cousin Kaiser. He has the ability to, but it's just... You just you gotta question it a little bit. You kind of you're a little you know I don't know. But the thing is about uh, Rashawn Evans is that you know that he's a guy that he's going to give you something in the league. He's one of those guys he shouldn't bust as a linebacker like a jewel. He should not bust at all because he's going to give you something. Whether it's just being a third down back or whether it's even being a great special teamer, this guy has something that is special about him that the past. Alabama linebackers that come out, I wasn't sure about. So anyway, let's get to the next name on the list. Texas linebacker Malik Jefferson. Jefferson is the most athletically gifted linebacker, inside linebacker in this draft. The biggest problem I have with him is that that's all he is. I see no instincts. I don't see nothing else that he brings. And he's one of those guys that he could always, you could find a place for him, but this right here will always be the biggest problem when it comes to him. I just don't know what to say about this dude and what to do about this guy. I do love the athleticism. And I mean, because of his size, you're like, yo, this dude can take on blocks. This guy can run sideline to sideline, can make tackles, can cover, can do everything that you want except the instincts. And that's what you're going to question so much. And I don't know what else to say about this guy. I, I'm going to just say this. When it comes to pure measurables, pure measurables, and what he can do, he should be a top five pick. But he's not. There's nothing else I can say about him. I mean, it's just... Anyway, I don't want to talk about Malik Jefferson. Let's get to T. Gray Scales from Indiana. In my notes, I wrote down energy and willingness to take on blocks. He plays with a lot of energy. And his willingness to take on blocks is something that I love to see. Now, the cover skills, you know, he's okay. He's not great in those. And I wouldn't put him out there one-on-one -on -one with anybody. I'll drop him back in coverage sometimes, but... Him as a player, to me, he's going to be pretty solid in the league. He may not be great, but he's definitely going to be solid. That energy is going to, what's going to really push him over the edge. If he ever becomes anything in the league, you're going to see him as a guy that he's he will he will mount to something. You know what I mean? A lot of these names that I'm naming, like I said, they're either going to mount to something or they're guys that are being that are being media pushed into the spotlight of a, of a top player at that position and it may not be to me like Malik and Mike at like uh Edmonds um who I already just named T Gray Sale Scales has a chance to being something pretty good in the league. But the next name on my list I'm not too big on and that's Jerome Baker from Ohio State. I just don't see it. He just seems like an athletic dude that's out there that does nothing. And I think that the athleticism is pushing him higher than where it should be. But I'm always a little skeptical about Ohio State players anyway. But he's one of those guys where it's just like, uh, I, he just doesn't really have much to me. And he's a guy that's being pushed into the to, to the second or third round and stuff like that. And I just don't see it. I just see a guy that picking a fourth or fifth round and get a special teamers out of him. And even in fourth round, I'm not even sure because fourth round guys, back in the day, four, third round guys is what fourth round guys are today, in today's age. Because of the, the everybody's gotten stronger and faster, fourth round guys should also be guys considered to be starters when you do uh, select them. That's, that's just how I think. But anyway, Jerome, fifth round type guy to me, who knows? I mean, I'm just not a huge fan of him. Sean Dion Hamilton from Alabama is one of the sleepers in this draft. He got hurt last year, but decided to still enter the draft. This guy from Alabama has the chance to be one of the better linebackers in this draft. I saw something from him that I didn't see in Rashawn Evans. This, I mean, you pick him up late, you may be getting something. 
So if your team picks him up, just trust me. This guy has some ability. Next name on my list is San Jose State. San Jose State linebacker, Frank Genda. Now, to me, he's just a straight-up downhill, downhill tackler. Um, there's nothing else special about him, but I like the way that he is as a tackler. He's probably the best tackler in this draft class. And that's what the crazy thing about it. He's the best tackler in this draft class. Um, Frank Genda is just... I don't know what else to say about it. He's not a guy that you put on third down. He's a straight up first and second down, downhill tackler. If your team picks him, that's what you're going to be getting. Don't expect nothing more from him. Don't expect him to, to, to get a lot of interceptions. Expect him to be a great tackler. So if you're looking for guys that can play the run, Frank Genda, Genda from uh, San, Hezo, San Jose State is a guy that you're going to be looking for. Next on my list is Memphis linebacker Gerard Avery. The only reason I put him on here is because he's, just like Malik Jefferson, one of the most athletic linebackers I've seen. The biggest problem with him is everything else. But the athleticism is there. And for a late-round pick, it's, he's a guy that I would actually would take a fly on. So, The next name on my list is Auburn linebacker Trey Williams. This guy actually is... One of the top sleepers that I have. Tackler, shed blocks, shed blocks, gets good depth and coverage. This guy can do everything that you ask for. And he not he's not getting the accolades that a lot of these other linebackers are getting. I don't know why. To me, I saw a guy that can do everything that you ask for in a linebacker. Now, he's not a guy that you may, you may not put one-on-one -on -one with a tight end or something or a running back going down the field, but he's one of those guys, if you have him in a zone coverage and you tell him to just drop back and cover your zone, he's going to do his job, and he's got solid instincts. Um, to me, like I said, he should be higher to me in the media than where he's at, but the thing is, not everybody can be a top pick in this draft, so... With all the names that I've named, I've named already 12 guys. This 13th guy right here is not going to be, you know, he can't be a first-rounder. Not everybody can be first-rounder. You, know, you see what I'm saying? So it's just one of those things. It's just a numbers game. And sometimes you're going to put measurables and time speed hot ahead of other players. You just will. But anyway, the next name on this list is the last name, and that's Maryland linebacker Jermaine Carter Jr. He is the sleeper of the draft. The sleeper. He gets nothing. He gets no accolades. He doesn't get talked about. He gets none of that. The only Maryland player to cheer about is DJ Moore, and the only other guy is J.C. Jackson, cornerback, who I'm going to talk about when I get to the cornerback videos a little, you know, down the road closer to when we get to the draft. But another Maryland player, Jermaine Carter Jr., gets no love. And he is possibly the best underrated linebacker in this draft. If your team picks this dude, you're getting a leader. You're getting a guy that can do everything that you want him to. High energy, just absolute beast on the field. And he doesn't get no love. I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. In the Big Ten, guys like Josie Jewell, who is deserving, or T. Gary Scales, who is deserving, gets a lot more than him. But guys like Jerome Baker, who, who shouldn't get nothing, you know, in compared to Jermaine Carter, the junior, but because it's a bigger school, it's it's a big name coach, that guy's going to get more looks than a Jermaine Carter Jr. But I'm telling y'all right now, Jermaine Carter Jr. is the best sleeper linebacker in this draft. And, uh, well, folks, that was the last name on the list. I just went through the list of the inside linebackers of the 2018 NFL Draft. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe. If you didn't like what I had to say about somebody in this video, please comment so we can debate. Share the video so other people can join the debate and we can have this great debating community of the draft. And please hit that like button. I thank you for watching. Goodbye.